Hey everybody, this is Anthony Brogdon from Strong, 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 Strong Inspirations because I got a lady that look good today. She about to kill you. Hey, this, that, you know that's what we do on this channel. We bring you some black history, stuff you might know, stuff you don't know, but we give you the inside scoop, straight no chaser. I mean the real deal from people who know what they're talking about. Strong inspirations. Um, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, hit the notifications button, tell some people about strong inspirations. Let's get the word out that this is where you can get some black history, straight no chaser. I got a book out, it's called Black Business Book. Over 200 facts on black history. One of the facts that we're going about to talk about is in my book. And I got a movie out called Business in the Black. The fact that we're about to talk about is in my book and in my movie. And had you heard of Rosewood, Florida? Did you hear what happened in Rosewood, Florida? Some white people got mad at some black people, really for no reason and went crazy. I got the ladies going to give you the, the story of what happened. So let me introduce you to my guest today. Her name is Lizzie Jenkins. I'm going to let her tell it, make sure I got it right. Thank you for being on Strong Inspirations. Thank you, Anthony, for inviting me, for having me to appear on your show. My name is Lizzie Jenkins, but I have to give my father and mother credit. So it's Lizzie Robinson Brown Jenkins. Okay. I am a Rosewood descendant of mentality attitude that they cherished on January 1, 1923, when they came to Rosewood, supposedly, allegedly looking for a black man, allegedly that assaulted a white woman. And you know, that has been the story for years. For a, years. White, a black man did it. Yep. A black man it's looked at me. A black man touched me. The same thing that same happened thing. in Tulsa. Right. And that I, lie, I call it the white lie. It's a privileged lie because white people, white women can tell it and get away with it. But anyway, Rosewood, January 1, 1923. Let me, let me stop you there. Let me December, stop you there. Let me start. Okay. Where is Rosewood, Florida? <laughs> uh, Rosewood, Florida is in Alachua County near Gainesville. We are surrounded by Orlando, Gainesville, now, uh, Jacksonville. I'll put Jacksonville. it that way. And okay. Tallahassee. It's between Tallahassee, Jacksonville, and Orlando and Tampa. I got you. Okay. So now is so, Rosewood, Rosewood was a black town when it first was incorporated, correct? No, it was majority black. It really was a white town that was founded uh, circular 1855. And it was founded by a white man. He was a contractor. He built the house, uh, the first house there. And that is the only landmark that is still standing in Rosewood today. So he let Nothing. black people move to his town. Yes. In fact, people don't talk about it, but they don't know about it. So that's why they don't talk about it. When the blacks came there, they were enslaved. They came on shrewners. My great great grandfather was found there when I started doing my research in 1848, 45, I'm sorry. And he was age one. And until this day, I have not been able to locate his parents. Wow. So they came there. And at one time, Cedar Key was majority black because they brought in the slaves. And, and as I said, people don't talk about it. They don't know about it. And some of us don't want anybody to know about it. But yeah. I have been researching this story for 29 sure. years. And I tell the truth, the whole truth. Sure. My mother's sister, my aunt, was the real Rosewood school teacher from 1915 to 1923. And she survived 
the Rosewood Massacre. Let me, ask you this. Let me ask you this. So now Rosewood, uh, what did they grow? Did they grow in Rosewood? What did they, what did they, was it crops or? Yes. Is it yes. wetland? What is it? it? Crops. But timber was very uh, high on the market. Timber. Uh, cypress. And they uh, cut the cypress. They had a cypress mill and they made pencils and they shipped the pencils north. Uh, oak trees and pine trees. Okay. There were croplands and uh, fruits and vegetables. Alligator, plentiful, was a market for some people that sold uh, wild meat, wild hogs, anything to make a living. But they were a bunch of, uh, when I say they, the blacks, they were progressing because they worked. They shared with each other. They bartered, traded off. If you got this, you plant this, I will plant this. And they shared. And they got along with the whites that were there uh, before Sumner was discovered. Sumner is a place which is adjacent to Rosewood, like three miles from Rosewood, where the whites, remember I told you the cypress uh, was evaporating and all used up after the pencil mill closed. So in, in 1897, 96, the majority of whites moved to Sumner and this is where the Rosewood massacre started because right. this is where Fanny Till lived in Sumner and pretended she had been attacked by my uncle. Oh, so I'm talking things. Yes. And uh, yes, my uncle who was married to the school teacher, that's, that's who they, that's who she said attacked her lies, of course. Well, oh, let me ask anyway, you, why did she say that? Why, I mean, she, because she was, was, it was hot she was having, summer day or something? She was having an affair with a white man, her lover. And she was, they say, she was tired, she knew she was married and she wanted to call off the relationship. And he didn't want her to call off the relationship. So a fight ensued and she was left blue, black bruised. So her husband, James Taylor, who worked at the Summer Sawmill, remember my brothers? And her husband, every morning would go to work at 4 a.m. So the, the white man, his wife was having an affair with another white man. Yes. She, the, the, the white man she was having an affair would beat her up. Yes. So she says, well, it wasn't a white man who did it. It was a black guy. Yes. And you know, she didn't use the word black. Yeah. So <laughs> how does she choose your uncle as the black guy that she said did it? Okay. He, he worked, I mean, he lived in Gulf Hammock. Gulf Hammock is approximately six miles from Rosewood and Sumner. He uh, carpooled from Gulf Hammock to Sumner with a friend, another white man. However, her lover did not have to report to work until 6 a.m. But the other guy had to report to work at 4 a.m. the same time as her husband James Taylor. They both went to work to start the engines at 4 a.m. So her lover had a couple of hours to mess around. So he chose to hang out with her because James Taylor was at the mill. So each morning he would return home at 6 a.m. for breakfast. But this particular morning when he came back, he discovered his wife was bruised. And she said, when he walked in the door, she started crying. You know how they, oh, I, he got so angry men from his workforce, from the Sumner Sawmill to come and help because a black man has attacked my wife. Now, how did he put this? And how did he get to Rosewood? Okay, remember I said from, he traveled from Gulf Hammock. Gulf Hammock is south of Rosewood. Sumner is north of Rosewood. So in order, he didn't have anybody to drive him home. So he had to walk home and he had to pass through Rosewood. And that's where my uncle lived. 
he went straight to my uncle's house because he knew my uncle. He was a mason. And so was her lover. Knocked on his door. You know, the Masonic knock, jumped up, ran to the door. Who is it? Who is it? He said to this stranger. And when he opened the door, he saw a white face. And told, he told him the story of what had happened. So because of brotherly love among the black Masonic, he ran back to the room, put on his clothes, uh, went next door, got his cousin, Sam Carter, who owned the wagon, and they took him from Rosewood back home to Gulf Hammock. He was free. However, as I told you, James Taylor, her husband was really angry. And by the time uh, uh, Sam Carter and my uncle Aaron Callier had returned from Gulf Hamel, the people uh, called people from, from Gainesville, but the Gainesville folks had not gotten there. And they and he told them that his wife had been attacked by a black man. He brought in the dogs from a nearby prison, you know, tracking dogs. So by the time the, the group, the mob got there from Gainesville, they of course gave our, the dogs clothes or whatever, uh, allowed them to smell. So the dogs led them straight to Rosewood. In fact, straight to my uncle's house. Wow. They didn't find anybody there. And they were upset because they didn't find anybody at his house because they had gone to Gohama. So they, uh, after the dogs did not find anybody at Aaron's house, they went next door where he had gotten his cousin, Sam, who owned a wagon to take him to uh, Gohama. So the mob was furious. She's a busy mob. They returned home to Sumner. And you know, they are made moonshine back then. So they all got drunk. Later that afternoon, they went back to Rosewood. They still did not find Aaron at home because in between that time, uh, I don't know what time they got back, but it was between that time and about 10 at night before they went back. Of course, they had gotten drunk. Their nerves had built up because you know they are a bunch of cowards. <laughs> oh, did you know that? So they had <laughs> I like your laughter. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Back that night, they didn't find Aaron because he had got. He was so intimidated, so afraid, and unnerved because he saw the crowd coming in. He and Sam Carter too. They left home. They went to Aunt Sarah Carrier's house, which is Sam Carter's mother, because she was the uh, uh, what you call it, the community person. I uh, can't think of the name. I want to say. But anyway, everybody would always go to her house for help and advice. So that's where Aaron went. And he was so disoriented, they had to put him to bed because he was scared. The mob came back that night, no Aaron at home. So they went to Aunt Sarah's house because that was the hangout. However, they didn't find Sylvester Carrier and Sylvester Carrier was bad, mama said, bad Leroy Brown. Right. And he's the one that killed those two white men that came uh, and kicked his mom's door down. But anyway, uh, Sylvester Carrier had left the house. Aaron was in bed. They went inside, pulled him out of the bed, dragged him out, tied him behind the car, took him, dragged him three miles to Sumner. I don't know how he did not die behind no uh, question. one of these model peas, but he survived. They were going to kill him. They beat him unconsciously and was about to shoot him and kill him because he was almost dead. So one of them or some of them say, well, he's damn near dead. Let's finish the end off. The sheriff drove up just in time to say, no, don't shoot him. I'll finish the end off. Put his in my car and I'm going to take him in the woods to kill him. He didn't took him to Gainesville. I can tell the story so well because it was told to me by my mom and her sister was the school teacher who told it to her. They wow. took him to Gainesville, put him in jail and he stayed there for six months. And he told his friend who was a sheriff in Gainesville, 
Alachua County Sheriff, you better not tell anybody he is here. Because you know they would have broken into the jail and killed him. Right. We saw that the other day, right? Right, 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 right. And uh, for six months, he kept his mouth closed and he did not tell that Aaron was there. And that's how Aaron survived. Now it's time for you to ask me a question. So, okay, so that happened, but they killed a lot of black people in Roseville, didn't they? They killed five blacks. Now, when you hear stories like, oh, they killed a lot of black Yeah, people. that's the story, yeah. Yeah, white folks story, okay? <laughs> because they don't want people to know that they got beat. Came back on Tuesday. This happened when I was on. So they had to go back home uh, and regroup and get drunk all over again and keep the moonshine <laughs> barrels going. And I'm serious when I, tell, when I tell you they made moonshine, they made their own moonshine. I got you. And it was a bunch of them. So when they got drunk again, which was night two, they came back. However, on day one, uh, night one, they told Sylvester, we're coming back and we're going to kick your B.A. Mm. Sylvester believed them and he prepared for them. He invited all of his friends, his cousins from Levy County, and they came through the woods ready with guns. Now, these fools from out of town who had relocated from the Gainesville, oh, I forgot to tell you on December 31, 1922, which was on a Sunday, they had a KKK meeting in Gainesville downtown. You know how they would have those rallies and celebrate. So they had called for help. So they were in Rosewood and Sumner too. So they didn't know anything about Rosewood and drunkenly went to Rosewood to kill. I don't know if you know what a rut road, have you heard of rut road? No. City, city, city. <laughs> hey, I'm city boy, I tell you. <laughs> Let this little country girl tell you what a rut road is. Okay. Back then, most of the black folks owned wagons and the cars that went the same way for so long, back and forth daily. You are going to dig some ruts. It, it, in other words, Pot the hole. soil, the sand is going to move to one side if you yeah, drive a wagon. Okay, now, yes, 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 yes. Okay, you got it. Uh, and they came to Rosewood down these rut roads in the dark, drunk, not knowing where they are going. And guess what? Sylvester and his guys were waiting. When they got close enough, they start cussing, shooting the guns, and talking noise. Sylvester had his men hiding out, waiting on them. So when they shot and killed one of the dogs, came to Aunt Sarah's house, which was Sylvester's mama house, and kicked the door open. And when he did, when the first one kicked it open, he was a deputy. He was shot, instantly killed. The next one couldn't turn back. He was too close, and he was shot. And somebody said, they done shot Aunt Sarah. And they said it just like that. They done shot Aunt Sarah, which was Sylvester's mother. And the women were in the house, including my aunt, the teacher, and they all yell. And Sarah's been shot. And Sylvester yells, shoot, everybody shoot. So the people on the outside, his friends started shooting. And here they are approaching with their guns in the dark. And they were shot. Wow. So and they were they would mass, they were massacred. They went right into a gun battle that they don't want to talk about today. Okay, so when you hear them say, oh, a lot of people killed. Yes, my mom say, if a lot of people were killed, they were white, but they don't talk about it. Wow. Her sister was there. And you know how they do the Indians when, they, when you watch the cowboy movie, all of the Indians are killed. Right. Same, same story, same scenario. They fought back. And mom uh, and MG say they shot her name was Maho, the Gussie Brown Carrier. I call her Aunt MG. And shot and shot. They defended themselves. And that's what gave them time to get away and get out of Rosewood alive because they scared them off. 
and they want mom said they were yelling, help, I've been shot, god damn it, help. <laughs> what a story. So now let me ask you, so then did they come back again or they just took that, that butt whooping and kept going and it was over? Okay, too late. <laughs> Now, again, what, what, when is this? When did this happen? Were, yeah. What year was 19, that? 23, 1923. Two years after Tulsa. Right. And one year after Okoy. I don't know if you've heard of Okoy. Uh, that was a, a massacre down in Florida also that happened this year. I mean, it happened 2020. Yeah, I think I heard of that one. So now, um, um, and after that happened, did the blacks and whites kind of go back to being cool okay. again? Um, somewhat. No, 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 no. They left. The blacks left. However, there were blacks that worked at the sawmill in Sumner with the whites. So when it happened, the boss at Sumner at the sawmill told the blacks, "You all need to stay home until this quelled down." what they how stupid they are and listen to me when i say stupid what they did not realize the blacks had walked from sumner that night to rosewood the back way to help sylvester fight and they went back the next day and went to work just like nothing had happened and but they were winking they couldn't talk about it but my mom said they were winking at each other and my mother was 20 at the time still living at home with her parents and the teacher's parents, okay? She was grown. She knew what was going on. Wow. But yes, they were involved, and, uh, but the whites never knew it. But the blacks, are, I mean, the, they held the, the mob off long enough for the sheriff to find and locate. There were, uh, Cedar Key was a train hub. They had lots of trains because the train was there to haul out the lumber, the uh, the 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 uh, what is the rosin factory materials. But they would not agree to help the sheriff because they did not want people to uh, target their families, saying, "Oh, your family helped did this, and we are going to get you." However. To, because he begged so hard that he wanted to get so passionately. He wanted to uh, make sure the Rosewood, the Blacks in Rosewood uh, got out and uh, to safety. So he worked, my mother said, 96 hours straight in an effort to rescue with the help of the two train conductors and the store merchant. Help rescue the people and get them out of Rosewood alive and he did that. Wow. So all that, the black people left Rosewood. Every one of them. Now did, where do you do you live in Rosewood? Where do you live? No, I live in Archer. And this is where Archer is where the teacher was from. I'm like 15 miles from Gainesville. Gainesville is the home of the of the of the Florida Gators. Yeah. Uh-huh. What's left so of I, Rosewood? Is Rosewood still a town? Did people move back to Rosewood or what happened to Rosewood? No, Rosewood is no longer a town. People did not move back. The only thing in Rosewood is a Rosewood historical marker that I, uh, had the governor. No, I'm sorry, in 2004, the Rosewood, uh, a Rosewood marker to Rosewood. And okay. It's still there. But you know, they have damaged that Rosewood uh, marker. Like 18 times, they have shot it up, pulled it up, painted it up. They, that DNA is still there. And we're in the process now of rebuilding the town of Rosewood. Not in Rosewood, but here in Archer, where my aunt, the teacher, and my mom grew up on this property. Wow. That I live on now, that was purchased in 1904. So we And again, how far is Archer here. from Rosewood? 20, uh, 44 miles. Wow. Mm -hmm. And we still go there and do ceremony. We were there 2020, January 1, and we, which was the 98th, uh, the 98th anniversary. And wow. by 
2023, at the centennial, we plan to have completed this Rosewood town. We're going to rebuild it. And you can go or your friends can go to my website, yes. rosewoodflorida.com, donate or read about what we're doing. Yes. Everybody. And I would love to invite you yes. now. <laughs> I'm coming. I got snow, I'm coming. Okay. <laughs> Everybody, uh, I... It was just God's faith that I found Miss Jenkins on the internet. God faith that she agreed to tell this story. Um, this is what we do as strong inspirations. I try to get right to the source as best I can. And you see, you know, I got to the source today. I got to the source today. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, subscribe to the channel like the video, hit the notifications, tell other people about Strong Inspirations because again, yes. I'm telling you, we're coming at you strong. Go to her website, rosewoodflorida.com. Um, I'm gonna put it on the thing. Thank you very okay. much. Don't okay. forget the book. I got love for you. I'm coming down I there. I'm telling people. Uh, everybody, thank you for watching us again today, and I'll be back at you real soon. Stay strong, stay safe, stay well, stay good, stay keep educating people. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'll see you again soon. Have a great day. You are welcome. Thanks for inviting me.